I thought by now they fall But you have never failed me Waiting for a change to come Knowing the battles won For you have never failed me yet. Your promise still stands Great is your faithfulness Your faithfulness
lift up a mighty shout to the Lord this morning? A mighty shout, come on. Release a great praise to Him if you're believing for great things in 2018. Oh God, we praise you today. We give you our praise. We give you our lives. We give you our families. We give you our future. We give you this year. We give you our needs, oh God. We look to you. We trust in you. We cling to you. We need you. We need you. And we rest in you. We stand with confidence in you. We're fearless because of you. We receive today strength. We receive today health. We receive today healing. We receive today provision. We receive today miracle help from heaven, angelic protection and blessing on our lives in Jesus' mighty name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven in 2018. And all of the church who agrees with that say amen. Give a big shout one more time. Come on, it's a new year. Praise God. Praise God. All right, turn to someone and say, you're not hungry yet. That's just your mind playing games on you because you decided that the moment you say I'm fasting, the hunger begins. Even if you just ate a meal, it's crazy. Even if you just ate a meal, it's like, oh God, I'm dying. No, you're not dying. You're not dying. You're going to make it. You're fine. You're good for about a month, really, if we want to get, let's tell the truth about it. Good morning, everybody. Happy New Year, everybody. And we want to welcome all of our campuses. So delighted that uh, Buford and Gwinnett and Spartanburg and Orange County are joining us right now. Hey, today is the one year anniversary of Buford. And we love you guys down there. All that God is doing, Pastor Shane, and all the blessings of the Lord that are happening. It's a miracle what God is doing. And it's just begun. It's just begun in the city of Buford and Spartanburg. And, Gwinnett, we love you so much, and Orange County. Isn't it good to know that the family's growing, right? Well, are you ready to enter into these 21 days of devotion and consecration to God? I got to tell you that the first service was powerful, but it, there has been a, um, I mean, you sung the same songs, and it was powerful in the first service, but there's, there's already been a notch taken up in the worship. If you were in the first service, you can feel a difference already. And I'm, I know we don't live by feeling, but the truth is every year we watch this, that if I were going to miss services, I wouldn't miss the next few weeks because there's just no telling. Some of the greatest memories that I have are in those services as the church is fasting and praying. So let's agree together for mighty, mighty things. I love the fact that we've got a brand new book this year called 101 Most Asked Questions on Fasting. So I don't have to take a lot of time and explain what fasting is. I don't have to take a lot of time. I've got books. Man, I've got all kinds of material, best-selling books back there that you ought to get. If you read those books, they're better than any diet book because they will make you fast. You cannot read those books and not have a desire to fast. I guarantee you, money back guarantee, if you read those books and don't want to fast, I'll give you your money back. And this one, because every year we get bombarded with questions on fasting, all, everything you can imagine people want to know, like, can I, can I put a steak in the blender and juice it? <laughs> I'm kidding, but we, we, some things almost that, that crazy we get, and we have answered every conceivable question, the top 101 questions on fasting in this brand new, just released this week, uh, book is very it's, it's, it's about uh, maybe a hundred pages it's real easy to read it has it's full of quotes brand new material and it'll be a blessing who wants this I'm gonna throw it out here it's coming all the way to Buford or somewhere there you go God bless you must have been a tither down there on the second row if you have your Bibles open them with me to the book of Daniel the 10th chapter 
I want to go to Daniel chapter 10. And Daniel chapter 10. I want to welcome our streaming audience. There are tens of thousands of people joining us now. Can you give them a big warm welcome? Thank you for being with us. Television audience, welcome. I believe God is going to do something in 2018 that's going to revolutionize your life. And right here in Daniel chapter 10, just open your Bibles, get them out, open them, and we'll get to that chapter in just a moment. But I want to give you a story, a true story that I read about, and, and it's been reported in numerous newspapers. True story, Mount Vernon, Texas, Drummond's Bar began construction on expansion of their bar to increase business. The local Baptist church started a campaign to block the bar from expanding with petitions, fasting, and prayer. Work progressed on the bar right up to the week of reopening when suddenly lightning struck the bar and it burned to the ground. After the bar burned to the ground due to lightning strike, the church folks were rather smug and started bragging about the power of their prayers. That is, until the bar owner sued the church on the grounds the church was ultimately responsible for the demise of the building, either through direct or indirect means. In its reply to the court, the church vehemently denied all responsibility and any connection to the building's demise. So the judge read the bartender's complaint and the church's reply and he said, and I quote, I don't know how I'm going to decide this case. It appears by the paperwork we have a bar owner who believes in the power of fasting and prayer and an entire congregation of a church who does not believe in the power of fasting and prayer. Now that's a dilemma. That's a dilemma. Well, I've come to announce that there is still a church in the earth that believes in the power of fasting and prayer. If the Muslims believe in fasting and prayer and they do it for 40 days during Ramadan and they pray five times a day, if the Hindus and the Buddhists believe in fasting and prayer and they do, I believe the church of Jesus Christ should believe what the Bible teaches about fasting and prayer. Jesus did it for 40 days. Moses and Elijah did it for 40 days. Daniel did it for 21 days. Paul did it for 10 days, 14 days, 7 days. Often he said, I was in fastings. The early church, Peter did it for three days. The early church fasted and had days of fasting. On the Day of Atonement, every writer of the book, of any book of the Bible, would have fasted at least one day a year because the Bible teaches that if you are a believer, you will fast. You will fast. So I want to talk to you today on this subject. What happens in the unseen world when you fast and when you pray? What happens in the unseen world when you fast and when you pray? I want to first tell you a quick story from the book of Exodus, the 17th chapter, because it has a profound lesson to teach us today about fasting indirectly. It's the story of Moses and the Amalekites, Moses and the children of Israel fighting the Amalekites, and God told him to go up on the mountain and lift his hands toward heaven. He said in Exodus 17 and verse, verse 11, lift your hands, Moses. God commanded him to, and as long as he had his hands in a physical posture, raised toward heaven in obedience to what God told him to do with a physical command and place a posture the way what he did with his body as long as he had his hands raised the Bible said the Israelites defeated the Amalekites in the battle they were fighting but when he became fatigued and weary his hands began to come down 
And two men, the high priest Aaron and another man named Hur, ran up under his arms and held his arms up toward heaven because when his arms would go down, the battle would turn and the Amalekites would begin to defeat Israel. As long, catch it now, as long as, as he had physical obedience, he was winning the battle in the unseen world because of his physical obedience. This story is important because it reinforces the fact that physical obedience, listen, brings spiritual release. You can say, well, if God's going to win the battle, he'll just win the battle. But in this story, God said, what you do with your physical body, Moses, determines whether or not this particular battle is going to be won. Because physical obedience brings spiritual release. That's why this story is so important that somehow there is a connection between what we do physically and what happens spiritually. What we do here with our physical bodies makes a difference of what happens in the unseen world. Angels were released into that battle when he raised his hands physically. If his hands started coming down, because God told him to do it. And if his hands started coming down, then the angels would withdraw and the enemy would begin to defeat. Hebrews chapter 1, you know, you don't hear much about angels in the Western church. I don't know why we don't talk about supernatural things in the church anymore, but we don't hear anything about angels. But Hebrews chapter 1 says that angels are sent out to render services on behalf of those who inherit salvation. It says the angels uh, are, are, of God are spirits that are sent as, as flames of fire. It says it in that same chapter later, in that same chapter there, he'll make his ministers flames of fire. His, he, he, he mentions that, that there is breath, there is wind, this wind and fire. That's what angels are like. And he said, I'll release those angels and they will be dispatched into the situation. So get it now. Here's the point. Hands are raised. And as long as Moses obeys what God tells him to do with a physical act, the battle is won because of what he's doing physically with his body. If his hands go down, then he begins to lose the battle. You see, the Bible said, lift up your hands without wrath or doubting. The word wrath means don't get mad about the instruction God's giving you to do something physically. Do it without wrath and then do it without doubting. Doubting means don't question what good does it do. Don't question when God tells you to do something physically. If he said lift your hands, don't stand there arguing with God saying I don't have to do that. No, the truth is Physical obedience brings spiritual release every time. And how much more if, if the raising of the hands brings victory under an old covenant, what would fasting and prayer do under the new covenant as Jesus you know, showed as an example for 40 days fasting and prayer? If we follow him in a set-aside time to fast and pray, our physical obedience will bring spiritual release. Especially when you do it without doubt, without sitting around saying, what good does it do to fast? What good does, it does good because God said to do it. It does good because Mark said this kind comes out but by fasting and by prayer. In the modern church, we have reduced everything down to feelings and intellect and not to any physical actions. I feel like I'm humble, so I never have to get on my knees and bow before the Lord. I feel like I love the Lord and I worship Him on the inside, and I don't have to clap my hands. I don't have to raise my hands. I don't have to stand to my feet and worship God physically with my body. God knows my heart. I feel faith, so I don't have to risk anything. I have faith in my heart. 
Everything gets reduced down in the modern day church to internal stuff and there is no outward manifestation. But if you tell your wife or your husband, I love you on the inside, but you never show it on the outside, they're going to question you. And God says, sometimes I demand of my people a physical act of obedience before I release spiritual reward. And fasting is one of those acts of obedience. There are times when God requires of all of us a physical action. A physical action. Why? Because there's a connection between the physical action here and the spiritual power that is released there. Moses with his hands up, as long as his hands are up, Israel wins. Physical obedience releases spiritual power, favor, help, protection, healing, miracles, blessing. I want you to understand that it's foolish to worship angels. No doubt about it. We don't, we don't go around in, you know, amazed and looking for weird angels. It's foolish to worship angels. The Bible's clear on that, but it's equally foolish to ignore them. They're in this book, therefore they are real. And when you begin to fast and pray, you release God's supernatural power power, and forces of heaven. I'm going to show you this right out of the Bible in just a moment. I want, you, I want you to, you know, think with me for just a moment. Some people always worried, you know, I, I hear this little saying, higher levels, higher devils. And that's a good saying, and I get it, you know, that the higher you go up in God, the more the devil fights you. But it's almost, that's, that statement almost glorifies the devil to me. Higher levels, higher devil. It almost says, I don't want to get, ooh, I don't want to go too high because then the devil will know who I am and really attack me. Let, let me help you with that. He already knows who you are. And who is protected more on a battlefield? A private? A new enlisted soldier? Or a five-star general? Who has more soldiers around him protecting him? The private or the general? The truth is, listen to this, higher level, higher angelic protection. Higher angelic participation in the assignment God has given you. The greater God trusts you with greater assignments, the greater he's, like Elisha, when, he, when his servant went out and said, oh my God, the Assyrians are surrounding us. What are we gonna do, prophet? He said, just relax. Lord, open his eyes. And he looked out and, and when he looked again, he saw chariots of horses and fire surrounding them because the higher the call on your life and assignment, the higher the divine protection of God around you and your family. Don't be afraid to dream big, to ask big, to believe get big. I'm not going to back down because I'm scared the devil will fight me more if we keep doing more. We've just begun and we're going to higher levels and we're going to have more angelic protection. Clap your hands and praise God if you believe it. Mm. This story in Daniel chapter 10 shows us how fasting and prayer affects the unseen spirit world. You've got to see this. Daniel chapter 10, I'll begin reading with verse, two, with verse 2. Don't worry, I'm halfway through my sermon right now. In those days, I, Daniel, was mourning three full weeks. I ate no pleasant bread, no meat, no wine came in my mouth, nor did I anoint myself at all till three whole weeks were fulfilled. Verse 10, suddenly, while I was fasting, while I was eating vegetables, while I was seeking God, while I was praying, I made a vow, I told God, if you read Daniel chapter 1, he goes into detail of what he ate. He said, I ate vegetables and water, and I abstained from pleasant food. 
He said, while I was in this three-week time, an angel came. Verse 10, suddenly a hand touched me that made me tremble on my knees and on the palm of my hands. And he said, everybody say these next words. Oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved. Understand the words I speak to you. This is an angel talking to him. And notice he said, I come and this is how God feels about you. Oh, Daniel, man greatly beloved. Understand the words I speak to you. Stand upright, for I have been sent to you. While he was speaking the word to me, I started to tremble. Verse 3, he said, I ate no pleasant bread. Listen carefully. The word pleasant there is desirable. I ate no pleasant or desirable bread. In other words, my translation of that is I became a vegetarian. I, I, I ate no pleasant food. How many of you know? How many of you love meat? Come on, you're a meat eater. All right, I, I was wondering. I was wondering if I was in the right place or not. He said, I ate no desirable, no pleasant food. Now watch this. Oh, what's interesting is when when Daniel 11 said, or Daniel 10 and verse 11 says, Oh, Daniel, man, greatly beloved. The word greatly beloved is the same word described desirable. Oh, Daniel, greatly desired. I ate no desirable bread. God's response was, Oh, Daniel, you are greatly desired by me. I ate no desirable food. I became a man greatly desired by God during this 21 days. There's a difference, folks, between God's love and God's favor. God's love is 100% full on seven days a week, 24 hours a day. There's nothing you can do that can make him love you more. There's nothing you can do that can make him love you less. You don't earn it. You can never deserve it. His love is full. His love is free. And God loves you. There is a difference between God's love and God's favor. Favor is different because it is initially given to us as a gift. And its increase in our life is dependent upon our stewardship of what we do to gain God's favor. The love of God is, it, it, it is absolutely full and free. It's perfect love and it's full and it's yours. But the favor of God does not come in its fullness on your life until you do certain things that gets God's attention. You can't buy God's favor, but you do not get more of God's favor without sacrifice. The increase of favor comes from obedience and sacrifice. Daniel's story is a story of favor. He was feeling the weight and the destiny of his family, of his people, of his nation. And so he in desperation says, I will push away from the table and I'll eat no desirable food. He set aside all that was desirable for a period of three weeks for 21 days. And he said, for 21 days, for three full weeks, I'm going to seek the Lord. The Lord's response to what he did, eating vegetables, drinking water, he didn't say, what good does it do? He didn't say, I, it doesn't matter what I do physically, God's going to do what he's going to do. He said, Lord, you put me on a fast. I don't, I'm, I'm giving up pleasant food. I'm doing this unto you. I, I'm eating no desirable food. And God's response to Daniel was, oh, Daniel, one who has found to be greatly desired by me. It's a picture of unusual increase of favor. That's my story. 
I shouldn't be the pastor of this church. I'm certainly not qualified. If you look at my walls, you see no degrees. I am a flawed man. But when I was just a kid, even though I was born into a great home, my mother and father were godly people, are godly people. My mom's still alive. But at an early age, something got a hold of my heart and I realized that I can't live off daddy's relationship with God and I can't live off mom's relationship with God. I have got to find God's plan for my life. And I began as a teenager pushing away desirable food, pushing away that which was desirable. First a day and then three day fast and then seven day fast and then 21 day fast. I would drive down to the beach in North Carolina and get me a hotel as a young man and shut myself in and stay for three and four days at a time and just be in that room and read the Bible, not watch TV and consume the Word of God. And while I while I did that somewhere, I don't know, I went on a 21-day fast and, and, and another one, and God began to move in my life, and somewhere in that process, God said spiritually over me, you have become greatly desirable to me because you gave up that which is desirable. That's why I'm here today. That's why I'm preaching to you today. I'm just a country boy from North Carolina. I, I'm not qualified to be and go all over the world and do what I do and speak to people that I speak to, people who, who, are, who are so powerful. But God says, when you win my favor, when you do things, there's something about you doing a physical act of obedience that brings spiritual release of favor and blessing. Look out, miracles will come, favor will come. Blessing will come. God will raise you up. It's less of you and more of him. And you know when you get there, to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Clap your hands and praise him if you know I'm preaching the truth today. There are times, strategic moments in your life when God comes not with a demand, but a challenge. You don't have to do it. You're not more saved if you, don't, if you fast. You're not more holy if you fast. It's a divine challenge from God. And he says at strategic moments in our life, I want a partnership with you. And what you do physically like Moses is going to release spiritual things. When you obey me, I'm convinced of that. I'm convinced of that. The physical response of Moses' raised hands was recognized by heaven. The physical response of lepers falling to their knees saying, have mercy on me, was recognized by heaven. The physical response of David dancing before the Ark of the Covenant with all of his might. Some could have said, well, if you love him in your heart, it doesn't. But the physical response of him leaping and dancing was recognized by heaven. The lifting of the hands and the sanctuary to some is unimportant. But God says, I watch what you do with physical obedience and I determine whether I release spiritual reward. Somebody give him a shout like you believe that my body is not my own. Therefore, present your body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. Listen to this. It's my reasonable service to throw my hands up, to not just know it on the inside, but manifest and part, enter into a partnership with God that certain seasons, if I fast physically, it impacts the unseen world spiritually. Children who 
or under the influence of demonic powers, what I do physically the next 21 days will affect my children and my children's children in the name of Jesus. Somebody praise God. Oh, I feel like praising him just a moment. The presence of God is coming in this room. Lift up your voice and praise him at every campus. Oh, oh God. Oh, God. Daniel said, Daniel said, <laughs> Daniel said, I set aside. <laughs> Daniel, Daniel said, I set aside food that was desirable. That's all I did. The day vegetables changed the world. I set aside food that was desirable. And I mourned for three full weeks. You don't understand that phrase if you've never done it. Mourn means I was not in a hyped, positive mental attitude. You really start fasting. You, you fast effectively enough that you feel it. I'm not talking about you eating something all the time trying to keep full. But when you got, you got to learn how to fast your, for you. I, I can tell you how to fast, but you have to work out your own thing. But you know when you're feeling it. You know when, you, you know when the flesh is being beat down. You know when you're connecting to God and disconnecting from the world. You know when God is doing something. You sense it. That's when the fast is working. If you don't feel it, if it doesn't move you, it won't move God. And sometimes you'll come in the middle of it and say, fast all day today. Fast sun up, sun down. Fast one meal. Just, I just want you to eat one meal tonight. You just be real sensitive to him. He said, I mourned. I was not in a hyped, positive attitude. <laughs> you, you may be right now. But by about 3 o'clock this afternoon, you're going to be in mourning. And you're going to wonder. You're going to have wrath and get a little mad and have doubting. What good does this do? I'm telling you. Daniel, you turned away the desirable. You have come. You have become extremely desirable to me. Wouldn't you love to hear God say that over you? Instead of saying, oh, Daniel, oh, Jacob, oh, Cherise, oh, Brock, oh, Tim, oh, Jensen, you have become extremely desirable to me, even greater than that, oh, Courtney, oh, Carissa, oh, Caroline, oh, Connor. Oh, Drake, oh, Amelia, oh, Luca. I got two more in the ovens, whatever their names are going to be. You have become greatly desirable to me because you had a granddaddy and a grandmother who would fast for 21 days, and I have, this family has found favor. I'm greatly desirable of this family. Hallelujah. This story illustrates in closing what happens when a man prays and fasts in the spirit world. Can I show it to you real quick? Listen to this. Let's read it. I'll begin with verse 2 of Daniel chapter 10. He said in verse, let's go to verse 11. Daniel, man greatly beloved, understands the words that I speak to you. Stand upright, for I have been sent to you. Do not fear, Daniel. Listen, from the first day you set your heart to understand and humble yourself before God, your words were heard. And I have come because of your words. I was reading a book this week in my office that a man wrote. And he said God put him on a, uh, he's a pastor, and he said God put him on a three-day fast, physical fast to fast food. But then he said God added one thing to it. He said you have become extremely negative. 
He was going through a lot of stuff in his church and in his life. And he said, you have, God said to him, you are a, you have become extremely negative the way you talk and what you say and what you speak. And I want you to fast your words for three days. Don't say a word for three days while you fast. He said he went off somewhere and shut himself away for three days. He didn't, he didn't, he didn't eat and he didn't speak. He wouldn't answer the phone or nothing. No words. He fasted words so that God would cleanse his tongue of negativism. And he said, God is my witness. He's a spirit-filled minister, and some of you will have trouble with this, but I don't. He said, when I opened my mouth to say something after three days of saying nothing, I started praying in a heavenly language, and then I started speaking words of praise, and tears were streaming down my face. And he said, God turned my tongue from bitter to sweet. <laughs> Glory to God. <laughs> Don't we need that? I have come because of your words. Listen now, the angel's talking. But the prince of the kingdom of Persia withstood me 21 days. There was a principality over Persia, which is Iran, and this strong demon power withstood me, the angel said, for 21 days. But because you kept fasting and praying, Michael, one of the chief princes, Michael, came to help me. There are three major angels, Gabriel, Michael, and Lucifer. Lucifer failed. Gabriel brings messages, but Michael is the warring angel, and he was sent as reinforcements to break through the enemy's resistance. It doesn't get any more graphic than this. We're seeing into the unseen spirit world. When you persist in fasting and prayer, the prayers that have been held up break through. Listen, God likes using everything he made. He loves partnership. He likes to co-labor with his creation. If he wanted the gospel preached, he could just come down on a cloud and do it, but he wants to use you and I. If, if, he, if he wanted to just show up, he would, but usually he shows up on, 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 on and presence of angels are there because they were created for a specific purpose. Wonder how many times we've had answers sent the first time we prayed, but they never actually made it to us. This story implies it is totally possible that the answer has been sent and stopped and held up. And sometimes God says, I'm waiting on you to do something physically that will release the power spiritually. Now let me explain something to you. There is no battle between God and Satan. God, God's not warring with the devil. God said, if I by the finger of God cast Satan out, all God's got to do is flip his finger. He, he gave the devil a, the, the finger and, and cast him out of heaven. There's not like this big battle. There is no war between God and Satan. But listen, everything was created for a purpose. There is a war between the angelic forces and demonic forces, and you and I get to vote who wins. That's what this story teaches, that there are angels and demons that are battling, and angels have the answer to prayer, and they're battling, and you and I, what we do physically can release spiritual power to those angels. This kind, Mark 17 said, cometh but by fasting and prayer. We vote in the battle of the heavenlies. Now let me close with this thought. In that story in Mark chapter 17, when the disciples said, why could we not cast this devil out? Jesus gave two reasons. He said, you have unbelief. And you are a perverse generation. In other words, he was saying to his own disciples, because that's who asked him. Number one, if you have unbelief, you have, 
You have disconnected from God. You have disconnected from the Word. You have disconnected from praise and worship. You have disconnected from church. You have disconnected from my presence. You have disconnected from hungering for me. And when you disconnect from God, unbelief begins to take over. You're not faith-filled. Unbelief begins to take over your life. Fear, anxiety, hopelessness, despair. And he said, first of all, your unbelief, you're disconnected from God. Now watch this. And you're perverse. It comes from the word pervert. In other words, he's saying, you, you're not connected to God. And on top of that, you're too connected to the world. You're connected to the lust of the flesh, the, the pride of life, the lust of the eyes. You, you, you're, you're picking up stuff that I set you free from. You're compromising. You're just like the world. You're, you're not connected to God. You're too connected to the world. He gives the problem, and then he turns around and says, but let me give you the solution. You want to know why you couldn't cast this devil out? You're not connected to God, unbelief. You're too connected to, to the world, perverse. But let me tell you how you fix that. This kind comes by fasting and prayer. What is prayer? Prayer is connecting to God, connecting back to God. Fasting is disconnecting from the world disconnecting from the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. I don't care who you are. I constantly, I am your pastor. I am your preacher. I do this full time and I constantly have to go back and align myself and say, God, help me because I'm disconnecting from you and I'm connecting to the world. And that's why I love this season when we get real, when we get honest, when we get to this place where we feel like we're disconnected from God, we're too connected to the world. In comes fasting and it disconnects us from the world and in comes prayer. It reconnects us to God and suddenly we have dominion and power over the enemy and a fresh anointing and we obtain the favor of God again on our lives. Somebody give him a great shout of praise. Don't you want that in 2018? I said, Lord, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? And the Lord said to me in my spirit, He said, I'm going to, I'm going to increase favor on your life, on the church, on the ministry. I'm going to disconnect you from the things of the world, habits, addictions, bondages, compromises, besetting sins, I'm going to disconnect you during this fast. I'm going to reconnect you to prayer, the word, Bible reading, fasting, seeking me, loving me, worshiping me. And you're going to return in the power of the Spirit. And nothing will be impossible to you. Nothing. Say this, if I give up desirable food, I'll become very desirable to God the next 21 days. That's not a boastful statement. That's not an arrogant statement. But the fact that God can say over me, and all he did was gave up meat and bread and sugar and ate vegetables and God said, oh, Daniel, you are greatly desirable to me because you're, see, you're doing something physical that brings spiritual release in heaven. Lift your hands high. Let's stand to our feet at every campus. Please don't move right now. Just stand to your feet and lift your hands high. Come on, just like Moses, I'm giving you a command. You're hearing it. Don't despise it. Don't say, what difference does it make? It makes a difference because God said, do it. Raise your hands high. Open up your mouth. 
And out loud for the next 30 seconds, I want you to lift your voice to God and cry out to him and say, God, I'm coming after you, less of me and more of you. I must decrease, you must increase these next 21 days. It's the minus sign of me, it's the plus sign of you. I'm ready to surrender myself, my family, my business, my future, my relationships completely to you again. I want to disconnect from the world, from social media, from this, from that, from all these distractions, from all the clutter, from the besetting sins, from the habits, from the secret sins. I disconnect and I reconnect to you because you love me and I know your love is for me, but I want to increase your favor for me. I want to become very desirable to you the next 21 days. Come on, raise those hands high on behalf of your family. Every battle going on, every circumstance, every situation, raise those hands high over your family, over your loved ones, over your, over your financial situation, over your health. Raise those hands high and say, God, watch my physical posture. Watch what I do with my physical body the next 21 days. And if I obey you in my physical, in my physical demonstration of sincerity, I ask you to release something spiritually that will win the victory for me and my family. He'll do it. He'll do it. He'll do it. Now, every head bowed and every eye closed. I was astonished at the altar call on the nine o'clock and I believe it's gonna be even greater in this service at every campus. See, the Lord strongly prompted me this morning before I got to church and he he said the way he talks to me, I don't hear an audible voice, but I know he said, now don't you, don't you just talk about fact. There will be many who will want to be saved this morning. And the Lord told me to say it to you like this. If you will do a physical act of obedience, it will release spiritual blessing of grace, forgiveness, and mercy. What did Moses do? He raised his hand. What am I asking you to do if you're a backslider, if you're lost, if you're addicted, if you're, if you're tired of the life you've lived, if you, if you can't go another year living like you've been living and you're sick of it and you're ready for a change, you're ready, you are disconnected from God and too connected to the world and too connected to sin and you want to disconnect from sin and reconnect to God. If I'm preaching to you right now and you know it, all I'm going to ask you to do is a physical act. What God told Moses to do. If you know you're not right with God and you want to get right with God, right where you're standing, at every campus, in the overflow, wherever you are, I want you, if you know I'm preaching to you and it's time for you to get reconnected to God, I want you to raise your hand high. I want to see it. Raise it high. I'm not where I ought to be with God and I want to get right with God. I want to get right with God today. I want every one of you that raised your hand, this is a physical thing I'm asking you to do. Every one of you that raised your hand, get out of your seat at every campus and walk down to the front of the building just as quick as you can move. If you're in overflow, you can come into the building, come into the main building and walk down to the, to the, to the, to the front of the church. Come on, I'm waiting on you. Come on, come on. Don't say what good will it do. It's going gonna, it's gonna to be life changing. Don't, don't get mad because because you have to stand for Jesus. Come on, this is your service. This is your service. This is your year. 2018 is the year that God's favor is gonna return in your life. And His love is for you. It's perfect love extended to you. Come on, get in, get in, get in, get in on this. Get in on this. Help them ushers quickly, quickly, quickly. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, let's sing a little bit. Oh, oh. I feel like you ought to do that mountain song. I feel like you ought to do that mountain song. And sing that first verse. Walking They're still coming. Come on. Walls. Come on. Come on. I thought by now they fall. Get them in, guys. Get them in. Get them in. Get them out of the aisles. Anybody got walls that you've been walking around saying, when, when, how long, Lord? Waiting for a change to come. 
we get devoted. Angels win or demons win. We get devoted with our physical response. Sing that verse again. Sing it, church. I thought by now they fall. But you have never failed me yet. I'm waiting for change to come. It's been delayed, but not denied. Declare His faithfulness over a new year. Come on, lift your hands high. I'm still in 2018 in your hands. Your promise still stands. Great is your faithfulness. This is my confidence. Fail me. Everybody at every campus. Say these words out loud, those of you down front. This is a holy moment. When you moved in faith and lifted your hand, you became greatly desirable to God. Say these words, Lord Jesus. It's a new year, and I'm ready for the change. I come with a physical response. I walk down this aisle, I lift up my hands, and I surrender my life completely to you, Jesus. Cleanse me, release forgiveness and grace, favor and goodness on my life again. I receive a washing, a cleansing. Disconnect me from the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. Disconnect me from the wrong people and every ungodly addiction. Disconnect me and now reconnect me by your grace, by your blood. Reconnect me back to God, back to his favor, back to his goodness. I receive it right now in the name of Jesus Christ. Oh, we need to lift up a shout. We need to lift up a shout. We need to lift up a shout. I see you move. And I believe I see you do it again. Come on, sing it. And I believe I see you. taking a little extra time but I want you to get your communion set out those of you down front relax 
We got, we've got communion ready for you. I want the ushers to come quickly with your communion. If you don't have it, you're going to have your first communion in right relationship with God in a brand new year. Wow. Come on, guys, hurry. Hurry with that communion. Come up if you need to. Come up here. If you don't have a communion set anywhere in the building, at any campus, lift your hand up, and an usher will get to you immediately. Keep it up. you got to keep it up. They can't see you. We're going to wait just another moment. Keep your hand up high, and an usher is coming. I need some ushers down here with, with, with the communion sets, and there's people out in this area. Keep your hand up. We will, it's very important. I love that we're doing this across the board at every church. Those of you at home, get a piece of bread, get some grape juice or any kind of juice that you've got, water, whatever it is. Tear it open. What you do is there's a little plastic piece on the bread. Tear it open and get the bread in your hand. We're going to have communion together as we start the fast. We're going to feast on Him, the bread of life. Are you ready? Are y'all ready to fast? How many of you are going to give up some desirable things so that God will say, and when He looks at you, you're greatly desirable? I tell you, He'll do it. He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. He is. Try not to miss any of these services. This Wednesday night, I'll be here. We're going to have camp meeting in this place. I know what happens. Next Sunday, there will be even a greater level of anointing. You watch what I tell you. We don't plan a whole lot. We're gonna, I'm going to announce Wednesday night some days and nights of prayer meetings in the brand new chapel. And we're going to have hundreds gather in that beautiful chapel. And one time, we, at least, we're going to pray all night long and all day, 24 hours. A chain of prayer and fasting in the new building. It's going to be beautiful. Take the bread, everybody. Jesus said, this is my body, which is broken for you. Take, eat, this do in remembrance of me until I come again. And he said, this is my blood, which is shed for the remission of sin. Take, drink all of it. This do in remembrance of me until I come again. So, Pastor, what are we doing? We're doing the Daniel fast. And, and, and then you need to decide what that means to you because some of you may need to eat bread or, or, may, um, or may need to eat meat one time a day because of a you know, medical thing or something. You work all that out. That's between you and God. I'm not going to get legalistic about it. You figure out, and then the key to it is make a vow to God. This is what I'm going to do for 21 days and keep it. Figure out what works for you and keep it. And again, if you don't feel it, God won't feel it much. He'll reward you for anything you do for Him. But, but do it to where these are not normal days. I'm in mourning a little bit. Just a little bit. Right? You ready? You ready for the blessing? Every one of you that prayed today, welcome to the family of God. Wow! Look at this altar. We have altar teams all around you. We've got a free Bible we want to give you. You've started the year off the greatest way you can. We want to help you in your new walk with God. I know, and I'd love to baptize you in water. Are you ready for the blessing? Get signed up. Altar team, I really need you to do your job today. So we got a big harvest here, and every one of these souls matter. We've got to follow up and help them in their new journey with Jesus. You ready? And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine on you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May He lift up His countenance upon you. May He give you peace, and may He give you grace to fast. Grace to fast and seek His face for the next 21 days. In Jesus' mighty name. We love you so much. God bless you, everybody. Have a great week. Go by and pick up that book, 101. Most often ask questions about fasting. It'll really open up your mind to some new concepts. Next steps.
in the Connections Lounge. Next steps right now in the Connections Lounge. If you're wanting to go deeper in God, go get signed up for the Bible College. It is a powerful, the school of ministry, I should say. Uh, I get them mixed up now. One of them's a Bible college, and one of them's something else. Go figure it out. But it is powerful. School of Discipleship, is that what it's called? School of Discipleship starts tomorrow night. It's still not too, is it too late? It's still not too late to get signed up. Hundreds and hundreds of our best leaders every year come out of that School of Discipleship. What a great way. But I must say, I think attendance will be down tomorrow night because I'm fasting and praying for the Bulldogs too. Come on, let's not play fair. Let's believe for a national championship. <laughs> I'm, sure, I'm sure the people in Alabama are doing the same thing. We love you. God bless you, everybody. Stay after God. And as we leave here today, I want to encourage you to join in this fasting journey that we're taking in the next 21 days. All the resources that you need are available at freechapel.org or jensenfranklin.org. But again, I invite you to join us on this journey as we fast together and pursue God. As we say in our, with our motto for this year's fast, less of me and more of him. But not only that, we want to invite you to join us uh, for School of Discipleship Online. A brand new session begins tomorrow night. It's an amazing four-phase discipleship program that will completely transform your life. So go to freechapel.org forward slash SOD online. Register today. I promise you, your life will never be the same. But we love you so much. Let us know how we can pray for you. Submit your prayer requests because we have a team, not only us, our staff, but a team uh, of prayer warriors that are going to be praying to see God move in your life all throughout the next 21 days and going into the rest of 2018. We love you so much. We're thrilled that you're joining us here today for service, and we'll see you next Sunday morning.